I've never really been entirely convinced that the best way to build speed with something is to practice it slowly. Yet more often than not, this is the advice that's always given. I have, however, noticed a few different techniques that have been suggested. So today I thought it would be good to share with you how I've adapted these techniques to pieces I'm trying to learn myself. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip, then don't forget to subscribe. Simply click on the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's all done for you. Playing at speed is probably the one thing that I've always found the most difficult to do. You know, smaller bursts of notes such as mordants or turns aren't that, that difficult to pull off, but anything that requires a longer passage I've always found A very difficult to manage and B very very prone to tension. I'm a member of a number of social media groups and you'll very often see the question posted about how to get a passage faster than it currently is. I guess 80% of the time, the advice is always the same, practice it slowly. You know, don't get me wrong, I think that slow practice is vital for a number of reasons, but slow practice alone surely is never going to make you be able to play something fast. The traditional advice you quite often see is that you start slowly with the metronome and over time you gradually crank up the speed bit by bit. And I've tried using this method, but to be honest, for me, it never really seems to work. The first time I saw somebody saying that slow practice was not a way to learn to play quickly was actually in Chang's book, The Fundamentals of Piano Practice. And then later on, I started to see this advice coming up in a number of different places, talking about different ways to build speed that weren't all about slow practice. And then finally, I guess what clinched it for me was I saw a video by Graham Fitch where he basically said that practicing slowly will not prepare you to play fast in a month of Sundays. To show you a couple of the approaches I've been experimenting with recently, I'd like to choose two very different pieces. One of them is Debussy's Gollywog's Cakewalk, and the other one is Chopin's Study Opus 25 Number 2 that's nicknamed The Bees. Both of these pieces need to be played fairly quickly, but they require very, very different techniques. If we start off with the Bs, once you've actually worked out the notes and the fingering, which can take a little while in itself, the first way you can start then to practice this is to use dotted rhythms. So you can do a dot on the first note of each pair, like this, Or you can do a dot on the second note of each pair, like this. The theory behind using this approach is that whilst you're still practicing it really fairly slowly in reality, every other note you're practicing at something much closer to your intended speed so you're starting straight away to build in reflexes for speed also because you're using two different patterns effectively you're practicing speed with each pair of notes that there is a next approach is then to take small bits fast so a study like the bees lends itself very well to this approach if you think about it, it's basically written in triplets in the right hand. So you can actually start using each set of triplets and practice that set of triplets quickly. Using this technique, you can then simply drill two or three measures or bars at a time 
and take each set of triplets with a nice gap between them. You know, it doesn't matter how long that gap is, it can be as long as you need it to be. If you use Franz Liszt's advice of thinking 10 times and play once, then make sure between each set of triplets during that gap that you focus very carefully on the next three notes that you want to play before you actually play them. Once you're very comfortable and relaxed playing these groups together, and perhaps you've found that the gap between each set of triplets has started to get really quite small all on its own, then start elongating the number of notes you play at a time. So in this particular study, a nice easy pattern I found was to start with a group of four and then place subsequent groups of six together. Using this approach, what happens is that you always finish one group of notes on the first note of the next set of triplets, if that makes sense. And again, the same rule applies. Take as much time as you need between each set of notes and consciously think very hard about the notes that you're going to play next before you play them. Later, you can try with longer groups of notes. To be honest, I think any pattern will work here. Practicing in this manner effectively means that you're not actually trying to build speed. The speed is already there. All you're trying to do is increase the number of notes at a time that you can play at that speed in a relaxed and controlled manner. You can use this same approach to practice your left hand as well. Again, you focus on remaining relaxed with a gap between each burst of notes and you focus very carefully on the notes that you're about to play before you play them. The other patterns you can use really are just limited by your imagination. The simple trick though is to just ensure that you're practicing quickly but in small groups of notes with whatever gap you need and that you're able to remain relaxed and in control when you're playing. If we now look at the Gollywog's Cakewalk, then the challenge for me really with this piece is that it needs to remain fairly light and brisk, but yet your hands are moving around the keyboard quite a lot, including jumping over each other. And whilst it's nothing like the bees in structure, you can adopt the same kind of approach. So the way I've been doing it with this piece is to practice it one bar and one note at a time. Something like this. Whilst you're doing this, you can drill one bar multiple times, but again, the same rule applies. Make sure there's a gap between each time you play and consciously think very carefully about the notes before you play them. There are a couple of other tips that I worked into my way of practicing like this. And the first of them is, when you have one group that you seem not to be able to get right, what to do really is not to slow down, which is the first temptation, is to try and play it more slowly. What I actually found the most effective thing to do was to shorten the group. So, for example, find where the mistake is and practice the notes in that group just up to the mistake until it's comfortable, relaxed and reliably right. Then add the notes, one note at a time, until you get back to the full-size group that you wanted. And a final thing you can do, especially if you're finding there's a tendency to have a little bit of tension in your hands, is when you've finished a group, actually physically shake out your hands to remove any tension. 
This is something that I've seen Josh Wright advocate numerous times in many of his videos. I've been practicing in this fashion for a while now and whilst I admit I'm still some way from being able to master the bees at great speed from beginning to end, I can now play sustained sections of it at speeds that I'd only have dreamt about before and without really developing any tension in my fingers and my hands. Let me know if you've tried this approach and if it works for you. And if not, if you give it a go, please do let me know in the comments below how you get along with it. If you're not already, then don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon so that you're notified of all new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.